something that's been bothering me because when Russia invaded Ukraine, I remember thinking that's horrible because I don't support imperialism and I don't support wars. And then I was sort of thinking it's interesting that you have people like, I don't know, Hillary Clinton or, you know, I, who else was talking on this saying that these are war crimes? Oh, even Joe Biden. And I, I just think that it's not what aboutism for us to address that where do we get off? Like the hypocrisy is suffocating to me. I don't understand how we, and again, I think it's horrible. I don't support that. But if we live, if we live, let's say Mexico had two little territories that we used to think were ours, but they're not really ours, but they don't, we would have had them with labor camps like years ago. So I just, I, I find the hypocrisy suffocating but yet I understand people not liking the what about ism. So Karen, I, I was actually curious, like, what are your thoughts on that? Because I'm sure that you see what I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, kind of what uh, Dennis was saying about driving uh, a lot of other countries into each other's arms, um, economically, militarily, um, psychologically, you know, our behavior, and this is what, you know, we have. So this, this, our government has no self-awareness at all. Um, it, it is really a joke. Uh, most Americans don't support our government. Um, I don't care what party you're in, and I don't care who the president is. They don't support it. It, it is. It is. They're they're clowns. They've been clowns for a long time. I mean, I go back to George Bush and even prior. Um, in my adult lifetime, they're, they've pretty much all been clowns. Even Obama. I mean, Obama. Obama, the uh, the Peace Prize winner, who who conducted the same wars his predecessor did, and the same wars his successor did. So you know, it's it's. Americans don't even connect, I think, very well with our government, but our government speaks for us and our government, it, it has this suffocating hypocrisy and, and, and this terrible arrogance. And it, it is not self-aware. It imagines that it has capabilities that it does not have. But and, and so in proceeding like a bull in a China shop around the world, we are driving greater and greater powers and more and more people. I mean, literally billions of people on the planet are not allied with the United States of America. They don't want anything to do with us and they laugh at us and they are fearful of us because we are unpredictable and hypocritical. But those other countries, uh, India, China, Russia, um, all of the global South, Brazil, Africa, these countries, Africa is not a country, but these continents filled with many different countries, many of whom have a history of being abused by our government in the past and in the present. They are turning away from us. Now, that would be fine. It really would be because, you know, we're, we don't want to be imperialist. We, who cares if they turn to their friends, their true friends, and abandon their non-true friends, which is what the United States has become, a, an untrue friend. It, it is a lying friend. It is not really a friend. It's a frenemy. If, at the best, it's a frenemy. At worst, it's an actual, uh, you know, ball and chain for the rest of the world uh, in their progress. So that would be fine. Except for the fact that we need the rest of the world. We need their resources. We need them to use our dollars. Because guess what? <laughs> you know, we don't have the resources that we used to have to back up our, basically, we can't write the check. We said we've, you know, we bought something. Our checks are bouncing. Okay. So we need trade with the rest of the world. We need friendly relationships with the rest of the world. We need to spend less on a imperial army. We, that's, those are the things that we need to survive. And we're not getting any of those things. Our foreign policy is driving all those people who we would like to trade with and work with and share with and engage with into the arms of other people. And none of them want anything to do with us. So um, for Americans who who have this uh, fe this imagination that or this this feeling that, oh, everyone looks up to us. No, that's not true. Everyone needs us. We say they need us for our military. That's not true. They need us for an, our economy, our productivity. Well, actually, that's not true either. And when we wake up to that, we realize we are in no position to do anything in Europe other than be nice to them. That's it. That's all we're required to do. But our, we cannot get that. That's the American people's position, I think. I don't care what party they're in. We want yeah. to be friends. want to trade. Most people, most people are definitely against war. That's just common knowledge. Like and most, most people want the prosperity of trade. And we want lots of good stuff because we are a consumer nation. And those, all of these, you know, we talked about the, the sanctions, this sanction, that sanction, group sanctions, trying to enforce the sanctions. Well, first off, they're hard to enforce under the best of conditions. But 
the fact that we are sanctioning almost every one of those sanctions we've put on Russia, China, anybody who's sympathetic to Russia or, or quasi sympathetic, all of this stuff bounces back and hurts the American consumer. Correct. Absolutely hurts us. And so our but government we've outsourced everything. We've outsourced everything. And sure. as a result of that, we are now seeing uh, just how corporate captured our government is. So oh, yeah. when you're trying to understand why our gas prices are five dollars a gallon, not just the fact that we needed to be on a clean energy grid two decades ago, should have been. Uh, the reason that the prices are high is not because of Putin. It is because the, the big oil industry lost a lot of money during the pandemic. And now they're scooping it because they make money hand over fist to begin with. And they figured out a way to hoodwink us and people are still taking it. And so, Matt, I think the I think Karen and obviously Dennis have brought really great points regarding the economic impact here that is something that I don't think the uh, the average American is really aware of in, in just how bad this can ultimately get. Uh, sanctions are an act of war. And right. when you impose them in such a dramatic fashion, it doesn't matter if all these other small nations are we're with the Ukraine and we're with America and all that. If India and China are with Russia, then it almost doesn't matter. It, it almost completely negates anything that we're doing. And this whole ch changing of the guard that some people have been talking about, if you want to share your thoughts on that, because it kind of seems like that what that may be what's happening right now. Well, to go back to the economic aspects for one minute in the larger American economy and the, the corporate capture of our government and the deliberate policies of the American government since the Nixon administration, right, of financialization, right? U.S. government policy is going to be that corporate profits go to Wall Street, not to the worker. I mean, that that's you know, you understand that you can understand how worker pay has remained flat or has declined for my entire oh. life. I was born in 1973. And that's because of deliberate government policies. The meantime, corporations ah. have gotten larger, banks have gotten bigger, and the billionaires have just, you know, whether their own wealth or just more have been created. And I've, I'm a big adherent to the work of, of, of the economist Michael Hudson um, on this. It, and Michael just wrote something recently where he talks about how the three sectors we have in the American economy right now that really capture the American government and drive policy are the military industrial complex the oil, gas, and mining sector, and the finance, insurance, and real estate sector. Those three are all integrated. And I think that gets back to the conversation we're having now about the war in Ukraine, larger American war policies. Hey, we just passed this weekend was the 19th invasion, a 19th anniversary, anniversary of the invasion of Iraq, a, a war that continues to kill Iraqis. Um, I mean, so this idea about using sanctions, though, to achieve a result is just flawed. It, it, it is, you know, there, there is no evidence of American sanctions ever working to achieve the policy goals, uh, Cuba being the best examples. But you can look at Venezuela, you can look at Iraq, you can look at North Korea, I mean, on and on and on, uh, Iran. I mean, th there are just example after example where those sanctions have done nothing but harm the population. And that goes back to kind of what we were saying earlier about how when you harm a population, that just makes them adhere more to the government. That just drives them towards more nationalist instincts or towards hardliners. People are going to protect them, right? It reinforces the machismo of the hardliners in power, right? We got to stand up to the Americans. And so you see that happen over and over again with sanctions, where sanctions, all they do is hurt people. That's all they do. They never change the government. So this idea that somehow we're going to sanction uh, Russia and that's going to make uh, Vladimir Putin and the Russian government, because Putin's very important, but also, too, there is a Russian government that he has constructed over these last 20 years that is a is an image of himself, but in itself is important to understand and, and, and respect. You don't have to like it, but respect it for what it's able to accomplish in terms of controlling its population and, you know, achieving results, if you will, staying in power. So the sanctions are not going to do anything about that. Sanctions are just going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 make the population suffer. And we're seeing that. I mean, certainly I brought up Iraq, um, you know, but in Afghanistan, the Afghan Ministry of Health just published that in the first two months of this year, 13,000 Afghan newborns died from mal malnutrition, from malnourishment, 
What that means is when a newborn dies from malnourishment, it means the mother wasn't eating enough to sustain the pregnancy, deliver a healthy live baby, or that the baby was born alive. The mother cannot produce right enough milk because she's not eating enough to keep the baby alive. 13,000 dead newborns in two months. And why is that? It's because the United States has sanctions on Afghanistan. So, I mean, it's not only the fact that it's, they don't work. It's the fact that they're criminal, they're immoral, and they're absolutely ghastly. And to go back to what Karen was just saying, it turns people against us. Uh, it, it, it's, it's absolutely insane that we do this on, on all levels. I, uh, I, mean, I know you want to, and y'all doing a great job of leading us. Go for it. Can I, can I no, please. Yeah. yeah. A couple things there when we talk about the, uh, the economic piece of this and the resources. One missing link we haven't talked about yet. I don't want to talk about that yet unless y'all decide to, but I want to mention one point about Iraq as well. But when we talk about the economic aspect of this, remember this, the Nord Stream pipeline. We have been fighting against that for the longest, and we may have gotten our wish. So just remember that. OK, and we can go back and talk about that later if you want to. But I want to digress. Or something. I just did a recent paper about the Iraq war. And one of the things that I said was that in this bigger picture, whether it be economic, I still think it's about imperialism. When you talk about our hypocrisy, you know, it's hypocritical of us when we talk about Russia invading, which I hate it with a passion. But likewise, when you talk about Iraq and, and Matt, when you were mentioning about you feel sorry for the Russian soldiers. But one of the things that drives me right now, you and uh, Danny and others who I've supported on the Wounded Warrior side of the house, is that I felt sorry and I still feel sorry for our soldiers, airmen, Marines and sailors, because we went to war in Iraq on a lie. Yep. And how do we do that? I felt sorry for them because we put fear in the American people when we talk about how you know our, our folks are they're, they're they're not knowing in a lot of ways. I don't want to use the term ignorant because people think, take that negativity, but it's about not knowing. And uh, we put fear in the American people's heart by way of saying, oh, my goodness, if we don't attack Iraq, they will be over here fighting us. How in the world are they going to get over here? But we fall for that, you know, and we say they have WMD, so we have to attack them. That's about imperialism. So what I said in that paper, I said Putin took our playbook and said, OK, you know, now he's saying, think about this. And, and, and the people in Russia who don't, don't follow stuff closely are saying, wow, hey, we have to protect ourselves. They, they're Nazis. Wow. They have, listen to this. They have WMD. Putin has literally said that about them. He's following our playbook as part of the big picture of the Cold War that's continuing. And sadly, whether it be Ukraine, Iraq, now we talk about Iran, you know, Iran, think about this for a moment. Iran has been a week away from a nuclear weapon for over three decades. <laughs> Benton Netanyahu, that was his talking point. How long? Think about that. And so I feel sorry for the Russian soldiers. I feel sorry for us. I feel sorry for American people. And then one other point I want to make, too, it's okay. As I said it earlier, I love the United States of America. But I'm OK with criticizing the United States of America. When we're talking about I criticize not the American people. I criticize our government politicians who steer our American people in the wrong way. I love our country. I love uh, what most of us stand for. But I don't love what a lot of our politicians and our corporate executives stand for. Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.